Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is Doc ID. I'm an infectious disease doctor and today we're going to talk about COVID-19 and post-infection immunity. This was an article that came out in JAMA and was published in May of 2020 and the authors are from the U.S. Centers for Diseases uh, in Georgia. So don't forget to subscribe and then go to the notifications, press all to get the all latest information from me. So this uh, article, it's a little complicated. I know it's gonna be a little longer than what I usually talk about, but it gives you a good sense of whether we have immunity after getting coronavirus or not. So I'm gonna go into uh, some slides, which are hopefully not that busy, and then you will see and kind of understand a little bit as to what coronavirus does. So let's start with the talk. COVID-19 and post-infection immunity. This uh, article came out in JAMA in June of 2020. This was actually published in May of 2020. So initially uh, efforts to control this pandemic have really relied on certain things such as non-pharmaceutical interventions which have included uh, PPE, which is hand washings, face coverings, environmental cleaning, physical distancing, stay at home orders, school and venue closings, and workplace restrictions. In addition to these public health interventions, development of herd immunity could also provide a defense against COVID-19. However, whether immunity occurs among individuals after they have recovered from COVID-19 is uncertain. Many human infections with other viral pathogens, for example, influenza, do not produce a durable immune response. Understanding whether and how recovery from COVID-19 confers immunity to decreased severity and reinfection is needed to inform current efforts to safely scale back population-based interventions such as physical distancing. Understanding potential post-infection immunity also has important implications for epidemiologic assessments, serologic therapies, and vaccines. So in this viewpoint or this article that these authors have, they describe what is currently known about the immune response to COVID-19, highlight key gaps in knowledge, and identify opportunities for future research. So what happens? Following infection, we have detectable IgM and IgG antibodies that develop within days to weeks of symptom onset in most of the people. Now why some people somehow don't develop a humor response is uncertain. And then adding to that uncertainty is the unclear relationship between antibody response and the clinical improvement. So there was a small study of nine patients with COVID-19 COVID-19 found that greater clinical severity produced higher antibody titers, which is good. However, that antibody detection and higher titers have not always been found to correlate with clinical improvement in COVID-19 patients. So what appears more certain in general is that as the viral burden typically peaks early in the disease and then it declines as antibodies start to to develop and then the antibody titers then rise over the next two to three weeks. So interestingly, the detection of this viral RNA many days to weeks after a person has recovered likely does not represent a meaningful clinical or public health risk, especially in the absence of any symptoms of so the patient's asymptomatic really doesn't matter. Unfortunately, definitive evidence again does not yet exist. 
So neutralizing antibodies, primarily the IgG, against SARS coronavirus 2 has yet to be defined, but they have found it to be persistence in up to 40 days from the symptom onset has been described. So not a long time, uh, but that's what they found. Now, in comparing that to duration of anti-responses against other human coronaviruses, again, should be discussed and we'll, we'll talk about that now. So, for example, SARS coronavirus 1, concentrations of IgG remain high for 4 to 5 months and then declined over the next 2 to 3 years. MERS persisted up to 34 months. So then, with regard to COVID-19, what do we have? We have a small, non-peer-reviewed, was a preprint report on post-infection immunity in primates. In that study, they had four rhesus macaques. They were infected with SARS coronavirus 2. And then following recovery, they did not become reinfected when they were re-challenged with the same virus 28 days after the first inoculation that was done. Now, whether people can be reinfected with SARS coronavirus 1 and MERS, unfortunately, is unknown. SARS has not re-emerged since 2004, and MERS coronavirus is just unknown. And what's more interesting is reinfections, however, can occur with at least three of the f other four common human coronaviruses. Now, this was in my first lecture about the common human coronaviruses that we have been seeing since 1960s, specifically 229E, NL63, and OC43. Now, the reasons for this reinfection in these viruses are not fully known, but evidence suggests that maybe because of short-lived protective immunity and re-exposure to genetically distinct forms of the same viral strain. So that takes us to date. That is when this study came out and published in May of uh, 2020. No human reinfections with SARS coronavirus 2 have been confirmed. And the second thing is there is also no evidence at present that such persons transmitted this virus to others after they had clinically recovered. Now again, the possibility of transmission cannot be ruled out. So now we go on to the next slide with some key gaps in all this knowledge that we have. Uh, and I'm just going to list a few things. So we really kind of read routine collection of such data, specifically having this high viral burden and culture. We really need it from a larger sample of patients under standard protocols. The assays that we have to detect the coronaviruses they are rapidly becoming available and again will be critical to estimate the prevalence of infections, including those that are asymptomatic. We also need uh, good testing which has high specificity so we can have actual true positives versus false positives with poor testing. So in summary, Again, existing limited data that we have on antibody responses to SARS coronavirus 2, as well as one small animal model study, suggests that recovery from COVID 19 might confer some immunity against reinfection, at least temporarily. Again, however, the immune response to this COVID 19 is not yet fully understood, and more definitive data on post infection immunity is lacking. So I hope uh, the article was informative about uh, coronavirus disease and post-infection immunity. Now again, this article was only published online in May. Since then, there is a lot more data that is coming out, uh, and we will discuss that uh, as uh, new articles start coming in. So don't forget to subscribe, and uh, I'll see you in my next talk.